Welcome back, guys. All right, so you can see that beautiful man right there. Yeah. So we're doing a little bit of judo that we did in class earlier today. And you will see me go for an underhook and then hook the leg a little bit. And then he spins, and this motion allows me to basically just ride right into mount. Um, going with his motion instead of fighting it is really what led me into that position. And you'll see here that I place my feet on his hips to help me ride up higher. I'm pretty high up in this guard right now, so it's kind of comfortable for him, obviously. So he's gonna need to work his way down. And he actually does a pretty good job of this. You'll see my feet start to move down because I'm also riding pretty high, uh, like posture wise. If you look at my posture, I'm very up. And then you see my, my body start to come lower on him. And when it does though, I swoop over his arm and isolate up to the upper body. So I'm actually a little bit higher than I was when he had his arms in. And then uh, instead of going for a triangle or anything like that, I don't put my uh, knee over his shoulder. Instead, I go for an arm tap because it gives me more control. If you put your leg over their shoulder, it uh, allows them an avenue to where their shoulder can basically rotate up. Anyway, so we're standing again. We go into that inside position, but he gets better head position here. And instead of fight too hard for it, I just go for an easy guillotine. Um, a lot of people don't throw guillotines as often as I think they should. I think a guillotine is one of those you can throw with zero consequences, so you can spam them regardless. And uh, it's one of like five super easy, uh, or high percentage, I should say. Man, my judo is terrible. <laughs> he says, what are takedowns? But I use a leg trip right there after controlling the opposite side, and I pull him back into the camera shot. So that was being silly. He almost got a trap and roll there. I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to move him. And uh, you'll see here, this time I go for the triangle, and you'll see why my knee is over his shoulder. This allows for more rotation. See? <clears throat> but obviously, it feeds right into the triangle because of the, the setup. go for a nice lazy arm drag, but into that um, side position. So I angle myself so no frames can really stop me. And then, yep. Again, I spam guillotines. I think uh, guillotines, again, are underutilized submission. You'll see a lot of that uh, in these rolls that I'm gonna post today. But uh, if you watch, it's all about cutting angles and when people try to come back into you, that is the best time, or like when people shoot on you, oftentimes they are doing half the work for you. So you just kind of have to put it in the way and then scoop. And then how you finish a guillotine is different than most people think. You think people think you just kind of pull up and squeeze. And that is not how I finish most of my guillotines, to be honest. Yeah, terrible throw here, but hey, works in the mount. And uh, I sneak into that angled position instead of taking triangle. I've been working on trying to do this um, T-shape. I find T-shapes are often harder and easier to submit people in. I should uh, Easier to submit people in, harder for the bottom person to move you. You get in a better isolation of um, controlling that one hinge point. So like a shoulder or a hip. And you'll see obviously that led from a triangle motion into wrist lock uh, Americana and then to an arm bar. But I'm staying really wide here to force him to try to come to the inside, but he tries to go for a, basically a shoulder throw and that, that ain't happening. I uh, cut that down. Oh, but see like there, I actually had a really good idea of like going to my back, but unfortunately his feet were not coordinated with himself and therefore he ended up tripping and i ended up basically just falling on top of him vice versa kind of thing and you'll see i did a hip switch on top of him to get the mount position uh, i've been working on the, the idea of like hip placement on top of people basically to staple them down um you'll see that 
later or in different rolls more. Not so much this one, because this one I ride more on top. And you'll see I'm tucking a lot of arms in this one, because I'm trying to work, um, work him more into the triangle position, I should say. I want to gain more of the back control, um, but obviously I'm only gonna roll as hard as the people that I'm rolling with, and taking people's back into back triangles is like right here is where I should have started to do one, but the triangle setup is right there by itself. So if you don't have to move too much, I start posting and coming into the mount mounted triangle instead of going for a back triangle. And then obviously people like to get their hips up and that is probably one of the smartest things, but you also give them hooks when you do so. You always want to posture if you can and then arm isolation nope yeah triangle defense is honestly like super simple but very hard to do you've got to make yourself wide like you literally have to separate distance from your oh. see this is what i'm talking about like why why does that guillotine work well, because his head is literally right there. And I just let it go because obviously he's got uh, some learning to do about guillotines. And guillotines are, uh, again, notorious for just kind of being there. And this was a really good, like, pendulum idea. But the reason why he doesn't win on this is because he doesn't get my hips, like, uh, he doesn't get my hips lower than his. Like, his hips needed to get higher. And he would have just rolled me right over. But because his hips weren't able to get above mine, it didn't pass the critical point where he could flip me over. <clears throat> so, like, if you are trying to win any kind of scramble, if you can get your hips above people, it's super important. So, like, when he went to go do that, I could feel that he could have easily swept me. Mm. So if you watch that part right there, you'll see that that back take was because I was doing that underhook and he passed it to the inside. Well, that means he removed all the frames to stop me from getting to his back. 